I did not shoot the sheriff. However, I did let the secretary get vaporized. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Just in Bello. This is actually a very good homage to Assault on Precinct 13, the 1973 John Carpenter film. I might be wrong by the year. Sorry for the delay in the review. I'm gonna be slurring a little bit, but I bit my tongue so badly on Friday that I haven't been able to talk normally since, so this is the first time I think I can do it without excruciating pain. This episode finds the brothers finally being caught by Agent Henriksen due to a tip-off from Bella, who she really screwed them over there. This is actually also the first time that Bella and Ruby are in the same episode. In this season, they don't meet, but they are in the same episode. Henriksen captures them, he takes them to a small town sheriff's station. What happens is a very good game of survival inside a small little building. In terms of a budget idea, this is actually very, very smart for the limited sort of budget that Supernatural would have. And the fact that this episode isn't directed by Kim Manners, it's directed by Phil Skigar, Skigar, I, I can't say his name right now with the tongue. It was really well done in terms of an action-packed episode. This is actually probably one of the most action-packed episodes in this entire season and kind of the show, at least in the opening five years. Because we're always used to those really close cut-ups and the constant cuts of the boys punching, throwing, holly water, shooting, all those quick cuts. And that's just how the show's been shot for a long time. But this episode really, really got you on your nerves because the amount of twists and the amount of turns and the amount of planning that you think is stupid but actually turns out to be pretty good but then actually doesn't, it really keeps you hooked into the narrative of this episode. And then this building is the epicenter for a major battle that's going to happen. There's this constant kind of back and forth of what the brothers will do inside the cell. Uh, there's also a kind of misconstrued sort of thought process between the cops, the secretary, and Henriksen about what the brothers actually are. And there's never-ending danger. Even in the cells, the brothers are trapped and they get attacked by possessed demons. One of them being Henriksen, where he shoots the sheriff and there's that really great freaking joke. And also Henriksen gets the biggest I told you so of all time from Dean. I love how the danger never ends, but also there's a point where you actually don't understand what the brothers are doing. Particularly when he's asking for a towel from Stacy, the, uh, or Nancy, the secretary, where she comes up to Sam and Sam grabs her and you're kind of like, what the hell was that all about? And then you realize he was taking her cross on her on her uh, wrist just for a short second they actually portray the brothers as something bad in terms of perspective for people who aren't us just for the regular folk i actually like that because it throws you off a little bit in terms of how they shoot it after henriksen is depossessed and he finds out what's going on ruby comes in after the whole building has been salted up and they're all trying to keep themselves safe she says you're kind of screwed because lilith is on her way I have an answer for you. Give me the heart of this virgin and we can all get out of here. And the brothers don't want to do that, obviously. They want to try and save everyone. But at the same time, they're wondering, how do we save all the people who are possessed outside? Because that's what Ruby's plan does as well. Just the death of one woman. The brothers don't go with that plan. And Ruby, <laughs> what does he say? I think we have uh, some water. I think I got some blood in my mouth as I was killing on my way in here. You really don't know how the brothers are going to get out of this. And then they have the plan of letting all the demons in. And of course, this is sort of that storytelling kind of trope where you don't know the whole plan, but they do. Which, I'll admit, for a television show like this, you have to try and keep the drama going. But for me, in terms of a screenwriter's idea, this is, is kind of stupid. Because up until you see what the actual plan is, you think this is the dumbest plan of all time. But then once they get them in, you see that Nancy and the other cop then start to resalt the line. One of the demons gets out, but they start to resalt the line, and then they start playing the exorcism over the speaker. And that's actually a pretty good plan. It's actually not a bad idea. It just, it seemed kind of stupid from the first point because you're wondering how the hell are they going to do this and especially with Henriksen not getting ripped apart by the demons even though he's just got a gun that doesn't really do anything unless Dean just had a shit ton of salt rounds essentially this is the battle the fight that we didn't get from the Croatoan episode where they were prepping for a battle in that episode and they never did it 
this is what would have happened if they did do it and maybe if they also had the budget to do it so they defeat all the demons everyone gets exercised and Henriksen's like yeah you guys are dead for real this time so we're gonna keep track of this because once we get into season six and seven it's gonna get a little weird he thanks them for what they did and they leave and then almost like i don't know how many minutes after they leave this little girl comes in, she's asking, hey, have you seen two boys? And they're like, oh, what's your name? Lilith, and boom, blows up the whole place. And I love this little twist if it's a little girl, because it kind of gives you a little bit of homages of the omen. The episode ends with Ruby coming in and saying, hey, turn on the, the news and look how you screwed up. And this is kind of the perplexing sort of conundrum that Ruby gives them but they never really actually go into any more detail later on in the show to be honest because this is actually a very pinnacle kind of question in terms of what are you willing to sacrifice to win a conundrum like this is never really brought up again in the show except for maybe Dean dying or the entire kind of battle between whether to say yes to Michael in season five there's nothing that really comes to match the question that she gives like how willing are you to win because either you sacrifice one to save the many, or you try to save the many, but in the end lose them all. And I like how the episode ends with them essentially failing. And you gotta understand, in terms of how Supernatural has not failed at almost anything, the brothers have barely failed at anything in the last five seasons. It's kind of why I got so tired of House. Sure, your characters can be weighed on their successes, but it feels so much more grounded when you also get to weigh their failures against them too because your characters are only as relatable as how many times they fail characters can always win that's a given in all of these sort of stories but when you see them fail that's what actually grounds them which brings them down to our level and makes them relatable and it makes me far more intimate sort of feeling with these characters so in the end i actually really do like justin bell the only things that i don't really enjoy are that one little tidbit of storytelling that they just leave out for dramatic purposes, but I understand. As well as just the conundrum at the end of the episode that never really is matched by anything. So in the end, I will give Justin Bellow a 7 out of 7. This is a really, really good Supernatural episode. I knew that I wasn't bullshitting myself when I said that Season 3 was my favorite season. I was just waiting for it to appear and it seems to have started appearing now finally so you guys gave me some comments in the last two episode reviews so i'm gonna read them off now justin bellow plays like a fun horror movie a bunch of people trapped in one place and they all gonna die well sort of still scary though and henriksen's character finally had a chance to shine too bad they killed him just when he got interesting ruby is awesome in here as well and i wish supernatural had more room for bella she was wasted after dream a little dream of me but this one is still a highlight of the season, R.I.P. Nancy. I would say that Bella isn't wasted, considering the end of her story, which we're going to see uh, either uh, the end of the season, I believe. But uh, it's not wasted. But I kind of get where you're going, because she kind of disappears for the next little while. Justin Bella is one of those episodes I really enjoy for putting the brothers in a corner, and then you go Butch Cassidy and Sundance. It's also a good close for Victor Henriksen to finally see the brothers aren't evil as he thought. I love the VFX of the helicopter exploding to the multi-exorcism. Seeing Lilith possessing a little girl is smart writing and definitely creepy. Given the fact in mythology Lilith is known for eating infant boys and makes men lust over her. Ruby also keeping up with the moral ambiguity shows that the writers didn't fully know what her character was going to be in season four. I get it's hard when you don't know if the season will be renewed or not, but overall it's one of the better episodes of season 3 to me. Yeah, I get that. As I've said multiple times in this season, Ruby and just the whole season 3 writer strike conundrum really did put the guys into a corner. And considering how good the season comes out into season 4, it's a fucking miracle in all honesty. Alright guys, so now we're moving on to... Oh no... Oh no, we're moving on to Ghost Facers. Oh god, these guys are back. It's interesting to see these guys back, because if I'm correct, they haven't been back since season one, but I don't know, I never found these guys funny. Anyways, give me your guys' comments on the Ghost Facer episodes, and I'll read off the best ones in the next episode review. Hope you guys are enjoying your time. Hopefully this tongue thing didn't bother you too much. And if you guys like the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads.
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.